Hello and welcome to this vlog. In the spirit of the exciting weekend I had, uh, and the spirit of all things love and romance and sensuality and indeed sexuality, I will be sharing with you today the third instalment in the fabulous Lily Harlem's equally fabulous series, The Challenge. Uh, this is book three, it's called Runaways. And the challenge, the series, focuses on the adventures of Olivia and her harem of merry men um, as they travel to and through various exotic and exciting locations. Um, let me read to you the back of the book. As ever, Lily's books are published uh, as ebooks and not paperbacks, so I will be reading off of my phone. Will five boyfriends become six? Olivia fears her life is about to be torn apart. Being separated from her men isn't something she can contemplate. How can she possibly go back to her old life in Portsmouth after all that's happened? So when Raoul's ambitious idea begins to take shape, she soon finds herself in another continent and with another challenge ahead. A challenge that will test all of her skills and demand nerves of steel, because Africa is hot and wild. A new adventure awaits around every corner, she has to keep her eye on the ball and her finger on the pulse, not just because there's danger all around, but because of the tension between the guys she's in love with. Oh, and the other one. Will Paul ever truly fit in? What the heck is going on between the two alphas in her harem? And can she hold them all together when the temperature reaches boiling point? Only time will tell. The Challenge by award-winning author Lily Harlem is a reverse harem series best read in order and intended for mature readers. The complete series is available on Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> a little bit of marketing for you there, Lily. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to read you the first couple of pages of the first chapter. Um, disclaimers. This book does get pretty hot pretty quickly, so whether or not I read that far will be time dependent and my mood dependent, <laughs> my, my bravery dependent, should I say. Um, accent disclaimers, there is Scottish very early on in this, so if you are Scottish and watching this, I'm really sorry for what I'm about to do to your beautiful accent. <laughs> Chapter one. Olivia gripped Raoul tighter and stared at Paul. Will? Paul asked, grinning. What do you think? Up for it. She opened her mouth and closed it again. He just annoyed the hell out of her, and now he wanted to accompany her and her men on their next challenge. Africa. Was he serious? I'm being deadly serious, he said, studying her, his smile dropping. This is just the kind of thing Global Medics gets involved in. Throw in Dante Vidal's son and it's a dead cert. He nodded at the money in Raoul's hand, and I reckon you've got enough there to build a reasonable structure and get a decent amount of equipment if you budget accordingly. You want to come with us, Olivia said, still hardly believing it. Aye, you'll need a doctor from the start. Word will get out that a hospital is being built, and before you've even got the and before you've even got the roof on, there'll be customers. Believe me, I know from experience. Olivia looked around the room wondering if her men were having the same hesitations about Paul joining them as she was. Harry stood with his hands on his hips, chest puffed up. He nodded at her once, his expression serious. Evan was rubbing his bottom lip and his attention was on Paul. He didn't seem so sure. Mason and Lucas shared a glance. She didn't need to be able to read their minds to know they wanted their elder brother hitching a ride with them. Of course they did. Well, what do you think, mi niña hermosa? Raúl asked quietly. She swallowed. She wanted to say no to Paul. Keep the relationship she had with her five men private and sacred. Paul was nosy. She knew that already. And he was opinionated. Paul gently rubbed the centre of her back. What do you think? she asked, studying him. He smiled down at her, and she saw in his eyes that he understood her apprehension. That he understood her. We do need a doctor, he said. You were very good with my burn. I still have my arm, but could you cope with more? No, I'm not medical. The thought of dealing with anything other than the smallest first aid emergency filled her with trepidation. It makes sense, Evan said, slipping his hands into his pockets. I'm like you, babe. I can't fix people. A building I can construct. Broken bones, not so much. She swallowed. 
her mouth was dry. It did make sense to take Paul with them on this next challenge, but something told her he'd likely upset the apple cart. Already, having only been in this room ten minutes, he'd made her question her control over her temper. It's settled then, Harry said, studying her. He'd said it as a question rather than a statement. This was it. If she really objected, if she wanted to insist on finding African staff and not taking Paul with them, now was her chance to say so. It'll be great having you there, Lucas slapped Paul on the shoulder. A real family trip, he grinned. Paul kept his gaze on Olivia. He knew full well she hadn't agreed to it yet. And until she did, she looked at Lucas. He loved his older brother, and she loved Lucas. With that in mind, how could she say no? He was so happy at the thought of Paul joining them on this adventure. And at the end of the day, she wanted her men to be happy, which meant she'd have to make... Com which meant she'd have to make compromises along the way. Okay, she said, maintaining Paul's eye contact. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> maintaining Paul's eye contact. We do need a doctor, so you're in. Good. He turned to Lucas and gave him a short, sharp hug. This is an excellent plan. Riley, Dante's personal assistant, said, stepping in from the corner of the room. I'll speak to your father straight away, Harry. I'm sure he'll be willing to support such a noble and charitable ex expedition. Thanks, Harry nodded. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Evan grinned at Riley, a man who seemed to make... Sorry, I lost my place. A man who seemed to make everything happen seamlessly, most of the time. And now, Olivia said, running her hand down Raoul's chest to smooth his T-shirt where she'd been gripping it. I need to speak to Mason, in private. She stepped away from Raoul, past Paul and Lucas, and took hold of Mason's hand. His eyes flashed. His mouth was set in a hard, tight line. He didn't speak. No one did. She tugged him away from his brothers. She was sure Riley was wondering about her tactile relationship with each of the crew, and it would be fueling Paul's already active imagination. But right now, she had bigger things to worry about. As she walked past Harry, she paused. Can I have one of those spare room keys? Sure thing. He delved into his pocket and handed her one. It's directly opposite. Thanks. She continued to lead Mason to the door. His hand was warm, and he held her fingers tight. Much as he was quiet and brooding, she knew his emotions were bubbling, the same way hers were. They needed to unleash their desire, face the hurt they'd caused each other, be as one, a man and a woman in love. As she closed the door to the suite, she heard Raoul's voice. Rum. We all have rum to celebrate, to celebrate Paul coming to Africa with us. I'm chickening out and stopping there, but it's not just because I'm being a chicken. It's because we're up to eight minutes and five seconds. And, you know, our one's attention span can only last so long, even when sexy times are about to happen. So I advise you, if you would like to follow Olivia's story and see what awaits for her and the gorgeous Scottish Mason, to listen to the entire, well, series so far, really. But if you have already listened to books one and book two, book three of the challenge series, Runaways, is now available on Audible, Amazon and iTunes. That's written by the gorgeous Lily Harlem. Uh, book one is Castaways and book two is Tearaways. Um, I do have some free codes, actually, if anybody wants a freebie, anybody wants to listen, just give me a shout and I'll send one, send one your way in return for a review Por favor, um, and apologies because I think I massacred almost every consonant in that audio. Uh, aud Sorry, can't read anymore. It's time for me to finish up in that sample. Uh, I am uh, accent attempter and reader, <laughs> narrator, Rebecca McKernan, also writer sometimes. Um, and you can find me on Twitter and Facebook at Becca Tells, Becca Tells Tales and www.rebeccamckernan.com. I am going to go and attempt to speak more clearly than I have done for the last nine minutes. Uh, thank you for your patience and your time. See you next time. Mwah.